But officially, good rainy, snowy, icy morning uh, in January to all of you. Um, extra thankful for webinars on a day like today and um, extra thankful as always for Janae for taking time out of her busy schedule to share some of the new books this month that she is excited about. Janae, why don't you take it away for us? All right. Thank you, Sam. And good morning, everyone. Hopefully you have a lovely beverage, hot beverage, and you're sitting somewhere nice and cozy. Welcome to Check It Out. And let's get started. And I have to say, I love this slide deck. I love the library slide deck. I just thought it was so fitting for today. Let's see. So our table of contents. What, we, what do we have going on today? Today, we have story time standouts. We're gonna talk about early readers. I'll share some picture books and board book roundup, uh, children and teen nonfiction, middle grade, teen fiction, graphic novels and manga, and what I'm reading slash grab a galley, which I'll explain what that is in a, in a bit, and upcoming events. And for those of you that don't know me, or if this is your first time here, welcome. I just would like to say welcome to you. Um, my name is Janae jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant with the State Library of Iowa. There's my contact information to the uh, left of your screen, so you can reach me by phone or by email. Please reach out if you have questions about youth-related uh, concerns, such as collection development, weeding, um, books that I need to have in my collection. Um, I'm more than happy to help and I'm more than happy to come by. And a lot of people know that when I do stop by, I bring a goodie bag of books with me for you to keep. Um, and I'm thinking warm. So that picture of me, that's a picture of me at the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright house in, I have to remember, in Wichita, Kansas. So I'm really thinking warm. So I'm, I'm thinking good spring thoughts and I hope you guys are too. But please reach out to me for any of your youth related concerns or questions. Okay, and we're going to get started with our story time standout for the month. And for those of you that are new, you're like, what the heck is story time standouts? Simply put, um, I pick books that are the best books to use for story times because story times, I feel like, are a youth librarian's bread and butter. Um, so this is my story time standout for January. And this is called Have You Seen Dinosaur? This is written and illustrated by David Barrow. And this is a charming picture book. Um, this is a follow-up to the 2016 book, Have You Seen Elephant? And I just adored this book. Um, it's about a young boy with a dog and an elephant, and they go around the city in search of a dinosaur that is hard to spot. Um, I put a picture in the bottom corner of your screen so that way you can see what the little boy um, is trying to find. Uh, but the picture says, we must be getting close. And they're sitting on uh, part of the uh, subway. And in the back, you can see the dinosaur's tail. Um, it's super cute. But I love the use of color and light and shadow to tell the story. And you can see the dinosaur swimming in the river. Um, his feet are poles in front of a building in, in another spread. And there's another spread where the dinosaur is reading a book in a skate park. And I just thought that was super cute, super adorable. Um, and at the end of the story, the dinosaur says, because <clears throat> the, the little boy's like, where's this dinosaur? Where could he be? And when the dinosaur finally coughs and says, <clears throat> then the boy sees him. Uh, truly adorable, truly sweet. Um, and I love how it says at the end, if you really want to see a dinosaur, a dinosaur, you have to be observant. Um, so this would be a great story time book for a dinosaur story time or for a family story time where the kids have to really look to see the dinosaur. And I, yes, I agree in the comments, someone is saying, let's see, it is very, Christy Allison says it's very interactive with kids to see if they can find it, yes. Um, very, a great interactive story book for story time. So grab ha Have You Seen Dinosaur? Okay, we're going to move to early readers. And our next slide. This is called Grace's Chinese New Year. 
This is written by Jackie Huang. And this is an awesome book if you need to update your Chinese New Year section. Um, you learn a lot in this very tiny beginning reader. Um, I was really impressed with all the facts that you learn about Chinese New Year through Grace and her family. In the beginning of the story, Grace and her family are preparing for the holiday. They clean the house and they literally take a broom and they sweep out the old year because that way they can welcome the new year. They prepare their house with red decorations because it guards spirits away. They make dumplings and they have each member of the family brings food and each food item represents luck or good health. And then afterwards, they go to a festival that celebrates Chinese New Year's with fireworks and there's music and there, the music is played really loud to block spirits and spirits and bad vibes away. This was a well done beginning reader book. Um, I can't speak highly enough. The pictures are outstanding, very colorful, just very detailed, uh, a very detailed story with simple sentences. Um, this is a win for me. So definitely pick up Grace's Chinese New Year. Our next book is called Fox versus Fox. And this is part of the Fox series that's written and illustrated by Corey R. Tabor. This received a starred review in School Library Journal. And the Fo if, you've, if you haven't read the other Fox books, please grab them. They're super funny. Um, but the cool thing about this series is that it uses repetitive words very well. And in this installment, the Fox is adamant that there's just one Fox around and that's Fox. So Fox just thinks that they're the only Fox. But when the Fox sees another Fox, which is kind of in blue and white kind of drawings, the orange Fox thinks, can I outsmart and outfox the, the new Fox? Or will the Fox make an, another friend? Um, this book cleverly uses repetitive words. Um, this is great for sight words, for, for those who are learning sight words. This is a perfect book for emerging readers. So if you have patrons in your library that need need one-on-one -on -one sharing or need more sight word books, definitely pick up Fox versus Fox. Now we are going to move to picture books and board book roundup. And I'm gonna click here real quick. There we go. Our picture book board book roundup starts with Forever and Always. This is written by Brittany J. Thurman and illustrated by Shamar Knight Justice. This received a star, star reviews in School Library Journal and Kirkus. I thought this was a gorgeous illustrated story about a young girl. Her name is Olivia. And every night when her daddy comes home from work, Olivia gives him a big hug and she knows that the evening will be full of love and fun because her father is home. And he works as a amp in an ambulance. But every morning when daddy goes to work, Olivia worries and worries and worries. Be safe, she says, be safe. And her she says this and her mama says this, but what if he isn't safe? because sometimes they've seen on the news how some black people go, they go out to do whatever and they don't come home. And Olivia's worried that that might happen to her daddy. So to pass the time, ma the mom and Olivia bake cookies, they spend time with each other. She even makes a bracelet for daddy. And so when he does come home, she wraps that bracelet around him. Um, it's a very tender book. It's a very sweet book, but it's helps kids give reassurance to say, yes, you know, these things do happen. It is okay. This is how we can handle and calm ourselves. Um, but it's a very important picture book. So definitely grab forever and always. Our next book is called Buffalo Fluffalo. This is written by Bess Kalb and illustrated, 
illustrated by Aaron Cran. Um, this is a cute picture book because um, it has a lot of alliteration and the rhymes, they tell a kind of a tongue twisting tale. And it's about a snuffalo, scruffalo, surly old buffalo who was ever so snarly and gnarly and tuffalo. Um, buffalo fluffalo is adorable. It has that repetition of rhyme and it has this phrase, I heave and I huffalo, leave me alone because I've had enough alo. So Buffalo Fluffalo is just walking through and he re repeatedly rebuffs friendly overtures from critters, including a ram, a prairie dog and a crow. And a storm comes down and he's just this big fluffy fluff. And when it rains, he loses that fluff and he realizes he's not this mean big buffalo. He's actually a really scrawny buffalo, um, but it's adorable. It's adorable. If you have friends that love rhymes and repetition, which are good for language development, uh, pick up Buffalo Fluffalo. The next book on my list is called Love Lala. This is written by Nala Blackman and illustrated by Jay Orlando, Jade Orlando, excuse me. This received a star review in School Library Journal, and I adored this picture book. I look at those colors. I love the colors. Um, this is about a young girl named Lala, and it's during the time of Carnival in Trinidad. And it's Carnival morning, and Lala is awake, and she's she's bright, and she's ready. She's ready to take part in the festivities of the day. So throughout the book, you see Lala and her papa, they dance through the streets of Trinidad and Tobago, and they cheer on the king and queen of the Carnival Parade. And they end this book with a grand performance on stage. I just love how vibrant and heartwarming the story is. I love the colors, the pictures that captures, it really captures the African and East Indian rhythms of Carnival, of the celebration. This book also has glossary terms in the back, so that way you're able to pronounce the words, um, but it is beautiful, just a stunning picture book, and it's something you don't really see in children's literature to explain what Carnival is, um, so it's a very unique picture book. The next book is called My Block Looks Like. This is written by Janelle Harper and illustrated by Frank Morrison. This received starred reviews in Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. This picture book is pretty cool because it recognizes the beauty of the bodegas, subways, and playgrounds that characterizes everyday life in the Bronx. Um, and it just pays homage to the ways the residents have shaped pop culture through music, art, and dance. This book flows. When you read it, it just flows. You're you're watching this little girl. It's a little girl in the middle um, on your screen. She's with the yellow uh, hoodie. But you watch this little girl as she travels on the subway and she's visiting the bodega. She's dancing to salsa with her friends, eating ice cream, playing basketball. It's just a really cool, visually appealing picture book. And it's the text is stunning. Um, so definitely pick up My Block Looks Like by Janelle Harper. And my board book for the month is called What is Snow? This is part of Usborn's Lift, Lift the Flap Very First Questions and Answers series. This is written by Katie Danes and illustrated by Marta Alvarez Miguens. And this is a simple board book. And it's just perfect for answering these types of questions. What can you do with snow? What's it made of? Where can I find some? What can I do with it? And where does it go? These are just some of the questions that the, books, the book asks. There are 30 lift the flaps. I know, I know some of you are like, oh, lift the flaps, oh. But there are 30 in here. And the explanations to the questions are simple and easy for toddlers and preschoolers to comprehend. 
Um, this is great for one-on-one -on -one sharing with a uh, caregiver and child, or if you have a preschool or a daycare that's working on a snow unit, this would be a great book to add to that pile of books that you give to them. Um, I found this to be fun, engaging. Lift the flaps are fun because they have, sometimes they have different little snow patterns and snowflake patterns. Uh, super adorable, super cute. Oh, and Alex has a comment. She says, they have rebranded to Paper Pie now, if anyone is looking. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Alex. Thank you for sharing that. All right. We are going to switch gears and we are going to move to children and teen nonfiction. The first book of the month is called Barracoon, and this is adapted for young readers. This was written by Zora Neale Hurston and adapted by Ibram X. Kendi and illustrated by Jasmine Lee Johnson. Uh, this received star reviews from Booklist and the Bulletin of the Center for Children's Books. And just to give you some um, background story, this, was, this book was adapted from the 2018 adult nonfiction title, Barracoon, the story of the last black cargo. Um, Barracoon, in this sense, um, barracoon, what a barracoon is, it's a jail where traders kept enslaved individuals. And this story that Zora pursued is about Cujo. Cujo was one of the last people, last individuals that were enslaved and that was on the black cargo ship. And he was in the, U the United States. He came from Africa to the United States on that last ship. And he was in the United States in 1859. He was, in, I'm looking, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, he was enslaved for five years and six months. And you really learn just what he endured from being pulled from his family to marching in these lines to the boat, to being stripped and laying flat on the ship. It's it's heartbreaking, and he's telling as a as an older man, he's telling Zora the story of just him surviving in the United States as a slave, and then when he it, when he is freed, he's married, he has a large family, but each one of the fam family members dies. It's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's moving. Um, it's just. Well, well adapted. Ibram did a wonderful job adapting this story for young readers to read. Um, it's a powerful read. Uh, so if you get a chance, please pick up Barracoon. Our next book is called A Grand Idea, How William J. Wilgus Created the Grand Central Terminal. This is written by Megan Hoyt and illustrated by Dave Sully, excuse me. This received a starred review from School Library Journal. And this is kind of a STEM oriented picture book. Um, and specifically, it's a picture book biography that pays tribute to William because he's responsible for designing and constructing the Grand Central Terminal. Um, it, it is very, very full with different types of pictures. You learn the backstory of how the idea came about, some of the challenges that William faced when incorporating those ideas with others. Um, but it's a very cool, cool book to visually see because you see all of these trains, you see how it was constructed into the building that it is now. Um, there is a timeline in the back of the book. There's facts about the terminal also in the back of the book and a source list for um, other sources. Okay, we are switching gears and now we are gonna go to middle grade fiction. And if I can get this sort, there we go. My first book on the list is called Shark Teeth. This is written by Sherry Winston and it received star reviews in Kirkus, Booklist, and Publishers Weekly. And this is a powerful novel about a young girl named Sharkita, or they know, or Kita. 
She's 12 years old and she's already mature than most of her peers. But at school, she's nicknamed Shark Teeth because she has crooked teeth, which her neglectful mother refuses to get braces for. Um, her mother also refuses to get care to give care for her for Sharkita's disabled younger brother, and he needs care and supervision, especially since he likes to play around the around the stove. Now Sharkita is pretty responsible for her siblings, and her she was placed in foster care at age three after her mother went out drinking and didn't come back home, and so she was taken away, brought back along with her other siblings. And so Sharkita is really hoping that her mother will change. She's hoping, but her mother is falling back in those same patterns where Sharkita has to watch her five-year-old and her younger brother while her mother goes out on these binges. And so Sharkita has anxiety. She feels just just sad and she she's tired. She's tired of staying up late to take care of her siblings and falling asleep in class. And she's joining the Pathan team and her assistant principal notices something is wrong. And Sharkita finds her voice to trust these people to say, yes, these things are happening. And her brother sets the house on fire while her mom goes out binging again and Sharkita feels like it's all her fault. This is a powerful book. There were times in this book I read it and I was just like, wow, I was blown away. Just, <sighs> sorry, it, it gives me so much emotion because I just, it's just so good. If you get a chance, please pick up Shark Teeth by Sherry Wil Winston. Our next book is called Maggie Lou Firefox. This is written by Arnolda Dufour Bowles. This received a starred review in Kirkus. And this is a fun book about Maggie Lou. She's 13 and this girl has a lot of energy and big ideas. She's nicknamed Firefox because she, she has so much energy and she wants to do all the things. She wants to be a boxer and learn boxing like her mother did. She wants to go hunting like her uncles do. She wants to help her father in his construction business. And so readers see Maggie learn and attempt how to do these things. I mean, even boxing, she's boxing in a tutu. I mean, or just wanting to build a dog hotel for her two dogs. Um, she's fun, she's spunky. I love the energy that Maggie has in the story. And I love that can do spirit that yes, you can do anything. She even writes her, her ideas in a notebook in a glittery sparkly notebook. Um, I just loved it. It's such a refreshing book for young kids and to see Native American literature out more, it's amazing. In the back of the book, there's a glossary of indigenous terms. And this is a great addition to your collection. So last month for Check It Out, I did a books I'm checking out preview of teen books that are going to be released in 2024. And I wanted to do something similar for middle grades. So these are the books that I'm going to be checking out in 2024 that are coming down the pipe. Uh, the first one is Misfits, and that is out now. That received a star review in Shelf Awareness. And I'm going to move my chat box real quick. This is written by Lisa Yi and illustrated by Dan Santat. We all know who Dan Santat is. He is the author of A First Time for Everything. Um, in this book, The Misfits, A Royal Conundrum, there's a group of preteen misfits at a boarding school for amateur crime fighters. They have to stop a heist and save their school from closing. This has gotten a lot of buzz and I can't wait to grab this book to check this out. February 6th, you want to grab Alan Gratz Heroes. This received a starred review in Booklist. Um, this is another historical fiction novel. And this one is aboard the battleship of the USS Utah with Navy pilot fathers during World War II. And what happens is the ship is attacked by the Japanese. And Frank and Stanley, the two main characters in this book, um, 
they find their friendship and their dreams in jeopardy when Japan when Stanley is seen as the enemy because his mother is Japanese American. Um, so that is coming out on February 6th. And Kate DiCamillo has a new novel coming out March 6th, and this is called Ferris. And Ferris is about a young girl who is a fifth grader named Ferris, and this kid's got a lot going on. So her sister Pinky <laughs> has vowed to become an outlaw. Their uncle Ted has left their aunt Shirley, and she's holed up in their basement. And their grandmother, Sharice, can see ghosts. And she sees a ghost in her room, and this ghost has plans for them. And to make things, top things off, Ferris's father is battling an invasion of raccoons. Um, I can't wait to read this just to see how this goes, but it's supposed to be a heartwarming book, um, but that is going to be released March 6th. So make sure you grab your copies of all three titles. Now we are going to move to teen fiction. And our first title for the month is called, sorry for the, sorry for the language here. It's called Shut Up, This is Serious. Um, this is written by Carolina Ixta. This received starred reviews in School Library Journal, Booklist, Kirkus, and Publishers Weekly. And this is a story that focuses on Bellin. She is a senior. She lives in East Oakland, California, but she is not having the best life. She just wants what every teenager wants. She wants to experience love or just even having a boyfriend. Um, Bellin is an at-risk teenager. Her father is out of the picture and he stole her, he stole her mother's savings. Um, she's not risk, she's at risk of not graduating. And to make things a little bit complicated, her best friend Letty is pregnant. And she she's pregnant by her boyfriend, but Letty hasn't told her parents about the boyfriend because her boyfriend is black and Letty's parents are racist. Um, with everything going on, Bellin is depressed. And so she finds temporary release by cutting class with an older boy. But she's slowly realizing that that distraction is only temporary and it's not going to solve problems. Um, this book deals with themes of friendship, drama, racism, resilience, breaking generational cycles, and that theme of knowing when to ask for help. This is highly recommended, and I hope you get this on your shelves. Next book is Into the Sunken City. This is written by, or excuse me, Into the Sunken City. This is written by Dinesh Theroux, excuse me. And this received a starred review in Publishers Weekly and Kirkus. This is a dystopian novel and it features Jin. Jin is 18 and Jin is raising her younger sister, Thera, in Cononino, Arizona. To make matters worse, the city is sinking. Their father died in a diving accident and it left them in trauma. But a drifter named Beely offers Jin and Thera the score of a lifetime. What's this score? There is a mass massive stash of gold hidden in the sunken ruins of Las Vegas. But in order to get this treasure, she has to team up with her annoying but very hot ex-boyfriend. And she assembles a crew to tangle with everything down below. Because Thera wants this. She wants this. She just, she says, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to go dive and I'm going to go get this treasure. But they have to tangle with sea beasts. There's crumbling structures. There's this mysterious figure named Joao Silva. So you have all of this going on and Jin, Jin is kind of torn because she promised herself she would not do the thing that she doesn't want to do again, which means that she has to go back to diving. Um, full of action and adventure. If you like dystopian novels, if you have someone that is looking for a new dystopian novel, give them Into the Sunken City. Okay. 
we are going to move on to graphic novels and manga. The first book on my list is called Lunar New Year Love Story. This is a teen graphic novel written by Jean Luen Yang and illustrated by Le Win Pham. This received a starred review in School Library Journal and rightfully so. I loved this book and the beginning blew me away. Um, it's about a young girl named Valentina and Valentina loved Valentine's Day. Every year, she makes Valentine's for her classmates and her father. Um, the mother is out of the picture and because the mom has passed away. That is until Valentina found out that her mother, whom she, all this time she's presumed that she's dead, she is not dead. She left her father for another man. And to make matters worse, she left him on Valentine's Day. Boom. I, I was floored when I heard this premise. I was just, and when I read it, I was like, what a way to open up a book. So now Valent, Valentina feels pretty sure that she's cursed. She's just like, there's no one, there's, there's no love for her. There, she's never had any luck with love, but she does find love and She's wondering if it's real love. Could this be a chance to break this family curse of no love? Or is she destined to live this with a broken heart? Um, this is full of humor and heart and just beautiful illustrations by Luen Pham, who I just love their illustrations. Um, this is highly recommended. So please go grab Lunar New Year Love Story. My next book is a teen graphic novel called Ghost Roast. Just fun to say that, Ghost Roast. Uh, this is written by Shawnell Gibbs and Shawnee Gibbs and illustrated by Emily Cannon. Uh, this received a star review in Publishers Weekly. And this is about a young girl named Chelsea. She's 15 years old. She goes to a prep school, a very expensive prep school. And her father is a paranormal removal expert. But she doesn't want her uber popular friends at the private school to find out this because she's afraid of being ridiculed and being outcasted. And her father has this business. It's not that great. But after going viral, it's becoming this big thing. And so her and her friends decide to go partying at a graveyard. They get drunk and they get caught and thrown in jail. Well, Chelsea gets grounded because of this. And as a punishment, she has to go work with her dad at his paranormal removal business. And when she goes to this mansion that they're studying, she realizes that not only she can see ghosts, but she can talk to ghosts. And she doesn't want to tell her parents this because her father is just known for getting rid of these ghosts and just blasting them into oblivion. And she meets this cute biracial ghost named Oliver who has a gorgeous white cat. And she is smitten with this ghost, but she needs to know why is Oliver still haunting this mansion? Um, this is filled with secrets, intrigue, racism. It's funny. I just adored it. So pick up Ghost Roast. Our next book is a teen manga. This is called Timon's B-Side Volume 1. This is written and illustrated by Yugi Shiwasu. And I just wanted to put a note on here that volumes one through four are out now. Um, there are six volumes planned for this series when I checked. Um, so I just wanted to give everyone that heads up just in case. And, oh my gosh, I'm reading these comments. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, but this is an awesome manga. This is about Yutuke. Uh, she's 17. She's a high schooler who works part-time as a housekeeper. You're probably thinking, okay, she's a housekeeper part-time. Why does she have this part-time job? She earns money so she can support her habit, which is being an ultra fan of the popular group Face. And she goes gaga over the singer Timon. And Yutuke is sent to a new client's house to clean it. And when she gets to the house, she's surprised to learn that the new client is Timon. 
However, he is not as shiny and beautiful as he, as she sees him in concert. Timon, when she sees him at the house, he's depressed. He's sad. He's wearing a hoodie. He's just has no confidence. And basically he has no basic living skills. The dude cannot cook an omelet to save his life. Um, so Yutuke takes it upon herself to boost his confidence. She helps him buy clothes, like just to have a normal life. She helps him cook an omelet. She just helps him basically learn to live like a normal human being when he's not in the spotlight. And Timon is grateful for her help. And there's this sense of will they, won't they, will they kiss, will they not? Uh, it was super fun, super cool to read. Uh, if you're looking to beef up your manga collection, definitely pick up Timon's B-Side Volume 1 um, by Yuki Shiwasu. Our next book is a children's manga. And I really wanted to put this in here because um, I do read the evaluations that you guys fill out at the end of each Check It Out. And someone had asked if you could, if I could share some children's manga titles because that is now coming down the pike are more children's mangas and they are being published. Um, this is a cute series. It's called Lovely Muko Volume 1. This is written by Takayuki Mizushina. There are three volumes out currently for this series and volume four comes out in February. Uh, this is just a silly, <laughs> it's a funny and adorable manga for kids, and it's based on a real dog. Um, Muko is a shisu and lives in Akita in the mountains with his owner, Mr. Komatsu. Mr. Komatsu owns a glass studio, and in the pages, you see him blowing glass and twirling the glass on the poles, and Muko, Muko sees this and he thinks that the glass that's blown at the end of the pole, he thinks it's a nose, or she thinks it's a nose. And she notices that the glass is shiny like a nose. And she says, I want my nose to be shiny. Um, and she's a happy dog. Uh, and she dreams of the day when Mr. Komatsu will become a dog too. Uh, she doesn't, she, she plays, she spends her days chewing up towels, jumping in the pond and inventing new games. Um, and there's a scene where she's not crazy about getting a cone put around her. And I just thought it was cute. Um, the reading level, Emily, as far as that goes, I would say roughly third through fifth grade. Um, but this is just silly. It's a, it's a silly, fun series for kids. Um, Muko, his face or her facial expressions are just fun. Um, the dog is very expressive, and I think that's what made me enjoy it. Uh, so grab Lovely Muko. And I'm going to click here. Okay. So um, last week, I was looking through my emails, and this email came. Um, I had mentioned Publishers Weekly in, I think it was November or December's Check It Out, but they do a grab a galley contest where you can enter and win free advanced reader copies. And they have done another one. Um, I just found out about it last week and I wanted to make sure you guys knew about it. Um, they have lots of titles up for grabs. The link is at the very bottom of the slide here. So just cop, uh, copy that link, copy it into your browser. And then this is what you do. You scroll through the titles in each category. Um, they have picture books, middle grade, young adult, um, adult nonfiction, adult fiction, and graphic novels. So you scroll through those titles, you add galleys to your virtual swag bag, as they call it. Um, and there's no limit to the number of books you can select. You can remove your galleys anytime. Um, and then when you're done, you click view swag bag on the navigation bar and click enter to win. You fill out the form and submit it. Um, it's pretty cool. I received a couple this time around. Um, and if you don't, it, it, and I see Alex says she has a really hard time getting it to work. Um, and yeah, maybe some people hopped on at once. 
I would reach out to PW as well to see if you can get the link, but this is the link that I received. Um, it's awesome. So hopefully you guys can enter and win some free arcs. Uh, but I love when they do these contests because they do really do send them out. Either it's either in a, uh, how should I put this? In physical form or as a digital galley. So I really like the, I like both. I mean, I like having the physical form, but I like the digital just because I can just read and swipe, swipe, swipe. So I wanted to make sure that this was on your radar. And finally, what am I reading? What am I reading now? I've got three books that are on my radar this month. I'm going to move my chat box real quick. Um, the first one is called A Drop of Venom. This has been getting a little bit of buzz. This is by Sajni Patel, and it receives star reviews in Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. Um, it's about a young girl named Manisha, and she is a warrior, and she's attracted to the warrior Prenuth. They meet, and they find hope in each other's arms. Um, but Manisha is violently sexually assaulted and she's pushed, pushed into a pit of vipers, never to be seen again. But Manisha didn't die. Instead of dying, she becomes one of the vipers. Um, this is a very, very cool book. I, I can't wait to dig into this more, um, but it's been getting a lot of buzz and I just really wanted to take a peek at it. The second book that I'm pulling is called Slugfest. This is by Gordon Corman. Um, it did get starred reviews in Book Page and Anne Kirkus. And it's about Yash. Yash is a middle schooler who is an athlete. And they realize, oh my gosh, they need uh, the eighth grade PE credit in order to move on. Um, so they take the phys ed equivalency known as Slugfest to earn their state mandated credit for PE. Well, Yash and the classmates that he meets, they stumble onto a scandal at the school. So I'm going to dig into this to see what that scandal is. And then the third book that I hope to get in my Kindle soon, I'm really hoping because I'm going on the net galley. Um, it's called The Invocations. It's by Crystal Sutherland. This book has been getting a lot of buzz. This is a YA book. Both A Drop of Venom and Invocations are YA books. Um, but with The Invocations, it did get starred reviews with School Library Journal and Publishers Weekly. And The Invocations is a dark fantasy dark academic twisty occult novel it's about these three teens who are drawn to magic for reasons beyond their control but they have to team up together because they have to track down a serial killer who is targeting witches this is in my wheelhouse i can't wait to read it but these are the books that are going to be on my radar to read this month and as far as upcoming events go, please do not forget we have summer learning opportunities coming up. This is on the State Library of Iowa's website, so that way you can take a peek at all of the summer learning activities we have planned. Um, we have the summer reading Canva templates. They have not been released yet because they are being edited as we speak. I got them done yesterday, so I'm waiting for them to be reviewed. And that way, those will be posted up as well. Um, but please take a look at the training opportunities that we have on the State Library of Iowa's website. And we also have summer reading webinars coming up. On January 30th, we will have the Adult Summer Library Program Virtual Training. That will be from 10 a.m. to noon with Marianne, Samantha, I will be there too. And then on February 1st, we will have the Just-In-Time Youth Summer Reading Planning Virtual Training from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. You can register in Iowa Learns, and Sam also put the link in the chat, and links to both of those sessions are on the page list linked above. 
Also for Pop YS Live coming up, we have the Prep for the Eclipse webinar. That will be Wednesday, February 7th from one o'clock to two o'clock PM. You can join me and Dr. Zach Steer from Erickson Public Library and Dr. Sarah Nelson from NASA and Iowa Space Grant Consortium. They will be talking about prepping for the upcoming eclipse and resources that you can use and uh, other organizations you can partner to plan for eclipse programming at your library. Also on February 20th, we will have the All Iowa Reads Exploring the Shortlist webinar. That will be from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. We will go over the shortlisted titles for adult, teens, and kids. And these can be books that you can also use at your libraries as well. And for both programs, you can register at on Iowa Learns. And Sam has graciously put the links in the chat as well. Well, thanks, Janae. Thanks and for a great webinar. Yes, thank you. And we have some giveaways and congrats. Um, four winners. I've been getting a lot of winners these recently. Instead of three winners, I'm just going to make it four from now on. Uh, four winners will be selected to win a Check It Out book prize pack. And all packs will be delivered via Iowa Shares. And I just want to say congratulations to Barbie Marlowe from Ruthven. Sylvia Van Hull from Larchwood, Dara Sanders from West Point, Diane Coberly from Anderson Center, and Donna Chapman from Woodbury County Library. Um, so make sure you put your first and last name in that chat because when I pick winners, if you just say Davenport number one, I don't know who Davenport one is, neither do we. So please put your first and last names. Um, that helps me out completely. It helps us all out completely. Um, and don't forget, the next Check It Out will be here Tuesday, February 27th from 11 a.m. to noon. Same bat time, same bat channel, so please be there. Um, thank you, Sam, and thank you for everyone for coming, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, Janae. Hey, I got to know what you think about the Youth Media Awards. What are you excited about? What were yes. you happy to see win? Okay, I hope In a you Like, I know we're running out of time here. In a minute, yeah. what are you excited about? Um, let me see. That one, the Newberry, the uh, the Eyes and the Impossible. I read that for SL School Library Journal's mock Newberry webinar, which our mock Newberry it didn't win, but for the real Aww. the real Newberry it did win. <laughs> um, that was a great book. Mexican one as well, which I loved. Um, the Mona Lisa Vanishes. That's a great nonfiction novel or uh, nonfiction book about the Mona Lisa painting and how it was stolen from the from the Louvre, Muse Louvre Museum and how it was tracked down. That was great for kids. Um, so many good books. So many. Yeah. So please check out that list. Yeah, I pulled up the list on um, American Library association website yesterday and I forget like how many titles it is I started going through it and my eyes started to glaze over and it's like okay I need to <laughs> I need to tackle this list and I have a little more brain space but there were some really fun ones on there that I was so excited to see win yeah so such great ones awesome. well good enough thanks everyone for coming thanks Janae for the webinar this afternoon um some really fun stuff uh that I hope We'll start seeing in libraries soon, and we will uh, see you all next time. Take care. Bye.